firstly, we're a year on, 371 days from when Ben and Laurie were first supposed to get married. Obviously, COVID got in the way, but finally we're here. We're able to celebrate the day, and I'm sure you'll agree as well. It's a beautiful venue, and we've got a beautiful couple as well. When um, Ben first sort of asked that, and he did sort of traditionally ask me uh, whether he could marry Laurie. Um, but when I say sort of, it was because I'm buying an engagement ring. Is that all right? <laughs> and actually for Ben, I knew that was heartfelt. So I was really pleased about that, you know. He's a true gentleman. And the reason why I know he's a true gentleman, firstly, he treats my daughter very well. Okay, and I really couldn't wish for a better bloke. All right? To be uh, my new son-in-law. Now really, as I said, it's normally tradition for the father of the bride to welcome um, the, your new son-in-law into the family. And to be honest, Ben, I don't need to do that. You've been part of the family for long enough. You've been part of the family since really you two got together because we've sort of matched, we've, we've hit each other off with the same sense of humor. And I'm really pleased that you, you are now officially part of the family. what I'm supposed to do today again traditionally I'm supposed to sort of talk a lot about my daughter well where do I where do I sort of condense it down to and it's very difficult to try and condense it into just a few lines but a couple of things you know from when um, sort of we were growing up or we, we were living in Germany and Laurie was growing up over in Germany and often we'd wake up in the morning and find that she'd gone outside of our flat and she was playing on the grass outside with the front door wide open letting the other kids come in and help themselves to whatever we had in the cupboards now, at this point, it's worth sort of considering that she was two years old at the time. So very intelligent, knew how all the locks worked and every lock was on, and she still managed to get herself out and let the other kids in, nicking all my crisps. I just want to say a couple of thank yous um, and, and firstly it's thank you to Antonia and Phil. Um, the reason for that and the reason for the thank you is because not only have you provided Ben for my daughter, you've guided him and you've given him the character that's turned him into the man he is and thank you very much. Secondly I'd just like to thank my beautiful wife Lorraine. All right and the reason for that is because I'm sure you'll all agree my daughter is absolutely beautiful and unfortunately she doesn't get her jeans from me. So I'd just like to thank Lorraine for passing on the jeans and making sure that she looks as beautiful as she is today. But what I'd like you all to do is, if you could please be upstanding. So Laurie and Ben, okay, he's to the past and for all that you've both learned, he's to the present for all that you share and he's to the future for all that you have to come. Ben and Laurie. Thank you. They both met through mutual friends in October 2011 during their undergraduate years at Northumbria University. Eventually living together, but not being together together, almost a year later in September 2012. So one night, 
after a heartfelt talk about her relationship with Ben, not really knowing what she should do, feeling heartbroken. Ben comforted Laurie, even confessing his true feelings for her, but ultimately just wanting to make sure she was okay. So now, Laurie realised she may also have feelings for Ben, but was stuck from what to do from this point onwards. Will her current relationship continue on and try to get it to work? Or was it destined to end and maybe she'd find love elsewhere? Well, Laurie didn't know and she needed time to think, reflect on her own feelings and decide what she wanted. So what happens next? Well, it was during this heartfelt discussion that Ben said the five most important words that I believe showed Laurie the true path to happiness and ultimately has brought us all here today. He said, no matter what happens, Laurie, I will wait for you. Ben was there when Laurie needed him the most, and he has been ever since. That, to me, is a true prince who saw and found the princess. A fairy tale ending. Thank you. Laurie, from this day forward. Laurie, from this day forward. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to share my life with you. To laugh with you. To laugh with you. To be proud of you. To be proud of you. Never take you for granted. To never take you for granted. Always take care of you. To always take care of you. And to be faithful to you. And to be faithful to you. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. <laughs> ben, from this day forward. Ben, from this day forward. I promise to share my life with you. I promise to share my life with you. To laugh with you. To laugh with you. To be proud of you. To be proud of you. Never take you for granted. Never take you for granted. Always take care of you. Always take care of you. And to be faithful to you. And to be faithful to you. I promise to love you. I promise to love you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I am delighted, therefore, to declare you are now husband and wife, and you, sir, may kiss your beautiful bride. today for coming and helping celebrate this wedding and um, on behalf of the bride and groom I know there's loads of thank yous going around but thank you on our family as well for being here today to celebrate and um, I want to thank every one of you who's come up to me and said oh have you done your speech how are you getting on with your speech because that's not nerve-wracking at all so thank you all for that um, and I want to thank Liam as well who gave me the best bit of advice I've had about my speech uh, we were on the stag do, we were about a round of drinks, and he just said, as one fellow Newcastle University graduate to another, take out the big, annoying, intimidating words, because there are a large amount of Northumbria students here. <laughs> so I know the outnumber is Liam, but me and you are sticking together, mate. Thank you for that bit of advice. Um, now, like I said, it's, it may have taken us an extra year to get here, but I knew this is where we'd end up six years ago. Um, we were on a holiday to Mauritius, and my dad very graciously flew me, Ben, Laurie, and my friend Kate to surprise my mum. Um, so after a long 15-hour journey, getting there, getting changed, surprising my mum in the bar, going having some food, a few drinks, we go back to the room, settle in, and Kate turns to me and she goes, your brother should marry Laurie. And this is 15 hours of knowing them over sleep deprived flights and a few drinks. And I thought, 
oh, I know Kate's get a bit tipsy after a few drinks, but she goes, no, generally you should marry her. And I said, why? And he goes, because the look my brother has when he, when he listens to Laurie, the look he gives her is just pure love. So I was like, well, I don't really look at my brother that kind of way. I've never noticed him. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, right, the next morning we got off for breakfast and again, Laurie's there talking to my mum about you know, the place and the, the island. Look over to my brother and he's just pure infatuated with her. And it's the look I thought I'd never be able to see again until I was stood next to you when Laurie was walking down the aisle. And that look today beats any kind of look I've ever seen you have. So I just want to say, Laurie, you've got the happiest guy in the world. Um, and Jim and Lorraine, I can speak personally, and I know you've known him for 10 years, but this man will sacrifice anything for your daughter. And I personally wouldn't be stood here today giving this speech in front of everyone, um, because when I was 15, this guy saved my life. And he sacrificed a lot and lost a few friends. So I know he will do anything for your daughter. I'd just like to say, like, we finally got here. We did it. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe it was meant to be. It's, um, I don't know if some of you know, it's exactly 10 years to the day that we met. Um, everyone says planning a wedding is the most stressful thing you'll ever do. We thought we were ahead of that. I got my spreadsheets out. You were on Pinterest looking for ideas. We were well ahead of it. And then a pandemic happened that just threw all that out the window. Um, so yeah, the last 18 months has been stressful, but we're so glad that we can actually relax and enjoy it now and share it with all of you. On behalf of my wife and I, <laughs> um, I, I would like to say a huge thank you to everyone for coming and sharing our day, uh, especially those that traveled a great distance and then you go pay a fortune for a pint. So, um, we are thrilled that you're all with us, um, having so many of our friends and family. Um, I can honestly say it wouldn't be the same without you. It would have been a lot less stressful doing the speech into an empty room, but well, thanks. <laughs>
Lori. <laughs> <laughs>